We've got Webb, we've got McKinnon, we've got um, Max and Crouton. Thanks for joining. We've got Hefe. Um, amazing. So we've got all of our speakers. Actually, we're missing Zanzi. Um, I'll just wait for a minute or two and we can get started. How's everyone doing? Um, Petra, I can see. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Or I can oh, you. okay. All right. So, Maxi Cruton, I think that you you may have been saying something because you put yourself on mute, but I couldn't hear you. So, I'm not sure if you did actually say something. Uh, do you hear me? Like, like, yeah. Okay. okay, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, perfect. We can hear you. Amazing. Yeah. GM everyone and yeah I'm fine and what about you? Yeah all good all good I guess midweek um I'm not sure whether it's a short week I'm not sure whether it's turning out to be a long week I think I'm just very confused at the moment <laughs> so I guess there's a lot going on um but how how about yourself? Uh I mean uh there is a lot of uh movement on the crypto market so uh, that's fine uh i'm doing good but <laughs> yeah i know definitely it's kind of like okay is it just altcoin season but bitcoin is it's kind of really exciting so it's kind of the the question, right? Is it the start of a bull run or not? Yeah, the one hundred dollars question. Yeah, for sure. For me, it's the beginning of, of the bull run, but I don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I think so. But I'm not sure. Yeah. I know. I think we want to believe, right? I was actually listening to a podcast, and I was listening to someone saying how it's kind of like it's bringing back those memories from maybe 2021 where things were like old time highs. Um, and it's like, okay, yes, we're back again. We've like been waiting for this for two years. We're, we're back at it. But I guess just no one knows, right? Yeah, no one knows. But I think that the worst is behind us. So yeah, we will see. Yeah, we will see. for sure, for sure. I guess for, from my end, one of the things I'm always kind of doing is just dollar cost averaging um, on things that I want to hold for 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 a long time. So I guess that's the best that one can do unless you're a, a daytime trader or something like that, right? Yeah, for sure. Seems like just the whole market's on a bit of an inflection point, whether it's just crypto or, or uh, the greater macro environment, too. I mean, it'll be interesting to see, like, sort of how uh, money ends up flowing around. Let's remember, too, Webb, that we're a little twisted because it's uh, warming up here really well on Polygon season, and uh, it's a little warmer here than most other places. So kind of the tip of the spear, you can tell when our momentum's increasing. Seriously, it's like when you see when you look at the top fifty and they're all all blood in the blood in the water, and then you see Polygon like, oh, it's just yeah, still still uh, <laughs> just plugging away, just looking right where it was. For sure, and I guess the good thing is that we are talking about Avogadro and Polygon and everything, so I guess everyone on this call must be quite happy, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, we were all kind of, honestly, like a lot of the Avogadro game was, was pretty early to sort of like the, the I guess, like the technical um, developments and, and uh, the feel for, for how Polygon was coming across, like into into the crypto environment, like a little bit more business development heavy. And maybe it didn't like translate to the, the most pump mentals during the bull run, but ultimately, like they're coming out of, uh, you know, this market cycle with with a ton of partnerships and uh, a huge tech moat. And I think the rest of the market's just sort of waking up to it. I mean, like a lot of times it's interesting because the kinds of people that were attracted to Polygon uh, were sort of people that were, that were interested in, in those things. Right. And, and they're not necessarily uh, the, it's, it's like a more introverted, like nerdy type. And so uh, not as, not as crazy and, and hyped up on, uh, on socials and all that. So I think it was just sort of interesting to participate in that and, and see how it sort of played out. So it's, uh, it's, it's looking good now. I mean, that's for sure. 
Absolutely. And to be honest, I think uh, I've actually listened to some of the Twitter spaces that the Polygon team, which um not sure if Zounzi is actually eventually joining us because he actually is a gross marketing associate of Polygon. Um, Petra, do you know if he's joining us? I, I personally heard from him this morning. I think he's got some personal stuff going on and he's going to be dipping out okay. for the rest of the day. Okay. Fair. Thank, thank you for the update. But no, for sure. I think that they are, I've, I've listened to a few of their Twitter spaces recently and it's just announcement after announcement, which, which is amazing. Well, I'll say on the back end too, there's those specific telegrams that a couple of us are privy to that have Mahalo and Sandeep hanging around in them. And we are very keen and aware of when uh, their chatter levels increase and their engagement levels increase and their heralding increases uh, it's definitely been doing that here lately. The, 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 size, the seismic meters are increasing here lately from the leadership down. Okay, I like this. We're getting into some alpha. Michaela, do you want to share something else <laughs> that might be only known to you guys in that Telegram chat? Well, uh, at least for Gachi Gang, something I think that's really fun for us to be reflecting on. It's kind of it's kind of big, like big... Um, knowledge to own but it's simple and true is this idea of sandeep applying an avagachi to his twitter pfp and mm -hmm. uh, t helping us lead the charge about establishing the culture of avagachi being one of one of if not the og original um not just pixel project on polygon but just in just the first in so many categories and so it's really really fun when we're looking around and we're like well i think we're headed somewhere i think this is going well and so when we see things like Gachi Vault start building on top of us, that's I take as encouragement. And then we see things like you guys showing up here, and we see things like Pondow building things on top of those things. And we go, this is good. When when people start building layers on top of our core, um, that's, that's very uh, bullish for me and gets me very excited. And it feels like as the polygon temperature increases, the Avogachi temperature is inherently uh, getting wrapped up in that enthusiasm. For sure. No, and thanks so much for obviously bringing that up. But absolutely, like, we are so, so keen. And one of the, I guess, just like interviews saying um, all of you guys, like we'll go into introductions. But one of the one of the things Pawn is very, very much looking forward to is whatever we can take from this conversation around future opportunities. We want to figure out like whether we built it, whether we kind of figure it out with like another partnership or whatever it is. But we definitely want to support more and more um of nft and DeFi kind of opportunities or, or things that just will help you know at the end of the day the community so i guess uh to kick things off um i would first like to introduce um actually some members of our team which are here on the call just for fyi for you guys to know so we've got petra who's kindly organized this entire event um cara as well she's actually not on the call right now uh, we've got Naim, our smart contract engineer. We've got Steve as well from uh, from the team with our front end engineer, but also going to ETH Denver. So please do hit him up if you if you are going to ETH Denver. Um, I know Hefe, you are, and maybe like some others from from the Adagochi Down, from Adagochi ecosystem. So please do reach out to him. Um, and then obviously, last but not least, we've got our speakers today. So Hefe. Um, You'll be helping me moderate this event, if that's okay. I'm not sure whether we, we ended up kind of agreeing to that, but Hefe and I will be sort of moderating, uh, co-moderating. And then we've got our speakers, Max Shikruta and Michaela, uh, Webb and, and, and Hefe, of course. Um, so I guess we can start off with a brief round of introductions, unless, uh, Petra, you want to maybe do the giveaway announcement first and then we can jump into introductions yeah sure um i mean i think we can do this uh, like at the end of the this call uh, but we have a raffle of our merchandise uh, backpack and the tote bag but i will start it probably like i don't know 10 minutes uh, before the end so everybody could join sounds Great, thank you. So, um, Hefin, what, how about we start with you? Would love you, I guess for everyone, all the speakers will go one by one, but it'll be great to learn learn a little bit more about your journey and experience with NFTs, with Avigochi, like, you know, how back does it date um, your relationship with the ecosystem? And Hefe would also obviously love to learn a little bit more about GMI.
Oh, we can't actually hear you. Petra, are you able to hear Hefe? No, no he's definitely a silent right now. Hefe, check your push to talk. I had to engage my push to talk. Uh, and that might be what you're missing. Oh, actually, that was the case in our last one. I'm going to actually end up figuring it out. Okay, so let's um, let's maybe start. Max Recruiton, you're like the top of the list there. So do you want to just get started with a brief introduction and your journey and experience with NFTs, please? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm uh, like uh, an old Def DeFi user and I started NFTs uh with Harvey Gotchis and uh yeah uh, it's been like two years and a half that I've been in the Harvey Gotchi ecosystem since almost the beginning and uh I'm one of the nine directors uh of the Harvey Gotchi DAO Foundation um yeah uh I mean, that's all, yeah. Uh, I'm only in NFTs with Avigotchis. Uh, I'm not seen up into other types of uh, NFTs because for me, uh, I really like the, 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 the fact that uh, NFTs is for is really well, I would say, well well uh, suited for the gaming environment. So that's why I really like Avigotchis. So, yeah. Perfect, thank you. Thank you so much for, for that. Um, Akadem, do you, do you want to go next? Uh, I'm going to keep it as brief as I can. So I got into Polygon uh, in February 21, uh, and I've been just stuck ever since. I love it to death and hard, hardcore Polygon power user. Uh, fell in love with DeFi really early on. Power or Polygon Guild Mage here for the local region in Utah. Um, f fell in love with Avagachi when I discovered the potential of NFTs in general. Uh, for me, that was about August of 21, and got to participate in Haunt 2, uh, and got inspired by early content creators in the ecosystem like Hefe, No Futuristic, uh, 3D Slaps, Gachi content creators that had very um, humble channels, but, but were committed roots. Uh, and that helped me get inspired with my brother at the time, Apron, to create something called Gachi Brothers, which is a podcast focused on uh, ecosystem participants, folks that were actually the, the users. And, and that helped me meet many of the friends here and spin out into the formation of what's now known as GMI, Gachiverse Media International. Uh, and is our way of not only contributing, but helping kind of spread the, the what we call the Gachi gospel and all things related to Avagachi, which lucky for us, um, kind of exposes you to all the best stuff in crypto in general. And so um, we're uh, kind of lucky to be involved with a good project that keeps us exposed to the cutting edge. And so happy to be here. Great. Thank you so much. And also thanks for um, telling everyone what is GMI and like what's the kind of work that you guys are doing behind that. Um, Web, Web, do you want to go next? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I've been... Uh just in and around uh, crypto for basically since uh, since you used to buy uh, buy and sell nefarious items on the Silk Road. Like I've just basically been uh, more or less involved in crypto the whole time, and then but but never really like um, like fully into it until uh, until COVID came around, and then uh, I'm sure a lot of people share like the same sentiment, just like uh, cooped up inside, like need something uh, enticing to just sort of like learn about and, and chew on and, and stuff. So then I really, really went down the rabbit hole and like got my first uh, like uh, hardware wallet and, and set up my keys and, and went on chain and like found just like this wealth of dApps and, and ecosystems and communities that were sprouting up and building all kinds of like financial functionality and and, uh, you know, from, from your lending to swapping to basically everything that we already have core to banking and then just expanding on that and, and really seeing like the limit, the limitlessness of uh, creativity in form of uh, NFTs and and how it can it can really be like just so much more like the breadth of what you can do with an NFT as opposed to just a, a regular token that you sort of understand like uh, it's it's just like a digital uh you know, a, a digital dollar or, or currency that you're used to, but then you have like this uh, 
this metadata aspect where it's it's got like a it's got a story it's got a it's got a whole bunch of data associated with it that that can uh, be transmutable and, and people can build functionality for and it can be read and written by other um like implementers and and things people that are making different kinds of dApps and different kinds of experiences and it's it was it was just like it blew my mind i mean like i was amazed I'm, i've been i've been pilled ever since and and that was sort of like around the time when I found Avogadro, and I was looking for something just to like sink my teeth into, like um, really, really get like invested in a particular community. And I just, you know, I stuck with this one in particular. Just felt like I found a lot of like-minded people, and you know, the DAO maximalist and and the the DeFi maximalist, and it, it was just it was it was all sort of catered, just built by us and catered to us and. You know, it's it's becoming this thing and it's getting a lot more traction as Polygon gets a little bit more hype. And, you know, obviously like chain is forever. So we have all this activity and it's it's not like it's a secret that we're the biggest and longest existing game on the Polygon ecosystem, so to speak. I mean, I remember when Polygon was just sort of like coming out and like launching their chain and, and there was basically like nothing and like you couldn't even open was like a separate website for polygon and and now it's getting to the point where it's like oh like there's these side chains past ethereum and there's a couple big ones and polygon's like almost coming and, and leading the pack and that's super exciting to see so um yeah that's sort of like my story and how i got into avogachi and i actually did a i um part of my like I actually went full time Web three and was working for Avogachi for a little bit, or well, Pixelcraft Studios for a little bit, doing like some promotional type stuff, and um, got really into it there. And and I just I never stopped. I, I love participating in the community and and however it fits and however I can make it work into my lifestyle. I, I just I can't get enough of this stuff. Perfect. No, thank you so much. And to be honest, you can tell. Um, all of your introductions and all of your kind of enthusiasm for whether that be Polygon or Avogadro, like I guess we keep seeing these names um, on Twitter. Not only you guys are actual users of um, of Pawn, which is obviously why uh, one of the reasons why we kind of invited you to to talk and and to make sure that this message can be spread to like to a lot more people. But you can definitely see that kind of. Um, I guess the, the the connection, the loyalty um, to Polygon and and Avigochi through through your Twitter. So I guess um, this is being recorded. So for anybody that is listening, please go ahead and follow these profiles, and we'll definitely put up those uh, Twitter profiles on our on our YouTube videos so everybody can can follow you guys. I guess Hefe, do do we have you now? Like, are you able to? Oh, unfortunately, we can't hear you. I know you just unmuted yourself, but so strange. Um, Petra, I'm assuming, are there any settings on your end? Um, or I guess, is it the same settings for everyone? I think the settings are the same. And since everybody else can okay. speak, I think have a, yeah. maybe try to change devices. I don't know, try it on your mobile, but yeah, yeah the last drop out of the channel and, and pop back in or something like that. Restart. Yeah, there was also Yeah, there's also this part around like the Apple set. If you're on a Mac, like I think there's these Apple settings that you needed to activate or, or something. Um but anyways, when whenever you're you're good to talk, um he'll he'll join back again. So I guess we kind of started off a little bit on, you know, this kind of you know, the future is NFTs. And I guess one of the questions I have for all of you, and, you know, I guess everybody can jump in and we can just have like a more casual chat about this, but it's really kind of this sort of future of NFTs. Um, at the moment, like borrowing and lending against NFTs on porn, um, I guess I still speak to people that are really shocked about it. And they're kind of like, oh my God, yes, that's possible. And then pricing is like an entire discussion, which obviously is super tough as well, unless you're like super into the ecosystem. But I guess my question for you guys is a little bit around, you know, the, the future of NFTs and like, you know, it is it is a digital asset and it's a representation of something. Um, so can they be treated or treated like any other assets? Um, 
would love to specifically know you guys' opinion on, you know, the, the future possibilities like NFT options, uh, different ways in which you could trade. Um, just really keen to know like what everybody thinks around the table and, and, um, and where do you see these kind of opportunities for NFTs? So I'll jump right in for one of my favorite examples. There's lots of lots of branches here, but you know we'll kind of do it in piecemeal stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of NFTs representing identity currently. Uh, and, and ENS is a good example of this on the Ethereum ecosystem. Um, but I think the cutting edge example of this, and a lot of us are familiar with this, is the Lens ecosystem. A lot of us are happy to have our Lens handles. It's really crazy to already be getting, they're bought offers most likely and not necessarily authentic, but it's interesting to be getting these auto solicited offers already on some of our lens handles in our wallets of people that are just flat offering certain amounts of ETH or USDC to just take it off your hands. And it's intriguing to be like, that's, it's just something that we haven't seen done yes, yes. well yet. So I'm a big fan of NFTs. That sounds like a Hefe coming through there loud and clear. So for me, NFTs is identity, and then we'll kick it over to Mr. Hefe finally figuring it out. <laughs> test, test. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes, I'd switch to my phone. Yeah, um, we can. Perfect. Okay, that's fine. I just switched to my phone. It's all good. Uh, just give me an intro, quick intro here. I appreciate everybody coming forth and, uh, you know, I think I share a lot of similarities with uh, people in here. There's a reason why we started GMI and it's because we saw this uh, synergy amongst people who were coming to Abagachi as uh, technically inclined folks, uh, people who were very, um, maybe not necessarily new to the space, but maybe new to what we were doing at Abagachi with the intersection of DAOs, gaming and NFTs. And so having a group of people coming together at GMI and basically combining our strengths and being able to accomplish things uh, bigger than ourselves individually, if we were to take those things on ourselves as individuals, I think really well, like in a really, like it, it defines what we're trying to do here in, in Web3 really well. If you're competing against each other as individuals, it's pretty much a race to the bottom. But if you're, uh, you know, building an organization with like minded people that are capable of of shipping things uh, and just creative in general, uh, I think bigger and better things can be built. And I'm seeing that with Pondow and what you guys are doing at Lending is you are uh, you're attracting a community of like minded individuals who are who get this right away. Uh, and that's going to be the first wave of adoption for Pawn, I think, is going to be the technically inclined individuals, which is, you know, again, why we so why, vibe so well, you and I, uh, when we have conversations between Avagachi and Pondow. And so uh, I think that's the first wave of users we're going to see are coming from games like Avagachi, coming from people who have interacted with DeFi protocols. Uh, and then there's going to be a second wave that comes in when we start to see market adoption. We were talking about the bull run earlier. And so when we start to see that bull run, uh, we're going to get a new wave of people who've never done a DeFi thing in their life, who have never uh, deposited anything on a protocol in their life. And that's going to be interesting because we're going to be the teachers for them and to pass that knowledge on to the next uh, generation, if you want to call it. Uh, and so it's really smart to take the DAO angle on what you guys are doing, because I think that will foster that kind of a community to you know, when you have second and third waves of adoption as well. For sure. Perfect. Thank you so much, Hasan. and welcome to, to the talk. And absolutely, like, I guess one of the points to make here is this kind of term, which we call crypto natives. Um, on our blog, we've got lots of interviews, uh, maybe actually reaching out to some of you for those, but essentially it's like a, a, a word that we kind of sort of came up with. Um, it's not kind of very well known, like what is a crypto native, but we do these crypto native interview series. And the whole point is that these people who are technically like inclined, they understand DeFi protocols, like they know what they need to read, what needs to be a checkbox before kind of using one. Um, and they immediately get lending a bar against NFTs. Like those are the people that currently are our user base. So you kind of nailed it in that point. Um, so I guess, uh, I guess whoever wants to sort of continue, uh, Michaela, maybe you want to sort of continue your thoughts on 
what you were touching on on the future of NFTs. You were talking about lens ENS identity NFTs. Um, maybe you want to kind of finish off on or, or continue on that point there. Yeah, nothing too too. I won't expand too much on it just because it's such a deep realm. For, for me, the the ex- the happiness that that I want to express is that we were just really lucky in Gachi Gang. Avagachi was one of the communities that were sponsored handles on Lens really early, so we were able to kind of experiment with that, see that, see the potential of that, and it's just this reminder that you can link up with like one project and learn it very well and represent it really well. And that alone can gain you the exposure to the next generation of, of meaningful dApps and developers and builders. And so the, this Avagachi interest continues to expose us to some of the best and the brightest. And so that's at least for me, um, by, foc- by being focused on Avagachi, I continue to be exposed to what I will term as the future of NFTs because I don't know what tomorrow brings. You know, they continue to impress me. And so I just stay put and see what gets brought up by the community. Love that, love that. Any anyone else kind of wants to um, add something to this point around like you know, can these NFTs be treated traded like any other assets? What kind of opportunities do you see with NFTs um, coming up soon or in the future? Hey, you had you had touched on uh, NFT options. I was sort of wondering, like, uh, if that's an ambition of your alls's, and but also, like, how how would you even do it? I mean, it, like, because at the end of the day, options are a lot of times um, specifically for assets that are more um, light. You could share more likeness. Like you wouldn't, I mean, I guess you could do it for, let's say like you wanted to do the option to buy or sell um, maybe like five board apes at, you know, whatever the floor price is, you know, expecting it to go down or up. Um, I I'm, I guess I'm just interested to see like on a smart contract level, how that would even look. And, and, and it like, if, if you think that that's like some some low hanging fruit, or if you think it's like it's a more arduous like type of build path that would have to exist to do it, because I haven't really seen anybody anybody's try and touch that. I mean, I'm sure that the regulatory uh, map, as far as it goes, is probably super complicated. But I mean, that's something that I'm super interested in. Like, I wanna I wanna be uh, like uh on the on the market making side of that like selling the selling the risk to to people that want to want to take it you know what i mean for sure like the liquidity providers i guess it came across because i actually um interacted or i saw that hamza khan who the head of DeFi polygon was at a twitter spaces with Bliff club um i'll actually copy paste this sort of link into the chat, but I kind of saw what they were doing. I thought it was like super interesting. I've just copied it um, in the chat, but basically it's a little bit of what they're doing now. They haven't launched yet, or they were meant to launch like on the end of January, but I'm not sure whether that actually has gone through. But essentially what what I'm kind of thinking, and this may have also come from my personal interest in in trading over the last couple of weeks. So I'm kind of a bit of a newbie in, (laughs) in leverage trading. But I kind of thought about it. I was like, well, if 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 any ERC twenty is actually considered as a digital, like obviously it's a digital asset, and it can, like you know, there's futures, there's perpetuals, um, and and you know, you can obviously there's enough liquidity for you to be able to um, either short or long, um, and based on what you think the actual charts are saying. I guess there's a lot of analysis currently being like that is possible, and and you can actually do. On NFTs as well. So I'm kind of thinking, okay, if there was kind of enough of that liquidity of those vaults where, you know, there's enough of that money, like, why would that not be an option if it is also a digital asset? Now, I guess whether it, you know, how it could be done or how it would work, I'm definitely not the expert there. And I, I don't know, do you, do you have any thoughts that you could add to that or anyone else around uh, in the call that could add some thoughts to that? You mean yeah, I'm kind of interested. I was just gonna say I echo kind of what Webb's saying. You know, I interest. I'm interested in the idea of like, uh, you know, well, either buying it as an insurance on policy on your NFT, so you know, you be kind of like selling a selling a put, for example, or 
by uh, selling a call, or you could buy it as a more take the take the use the option as a bet. In the case, you know, you'd be buying uh, you'd be buying a call, you know, betting like longing it, or you'd be buying a put to short it. Um, so I'm kind of interested to know more about how that would work. Would there be some sort of, I guess, AMM that would deal with all this stuff? And, um, you know, another challenge I guess I could see with that is what Webb said also with the likeness of one to another. So, you know, with options like time is a big factor, but also I guess I could see the intrinsic value of the NFTs being a big factor here. Um, and so I guess that might make some NFTs more uh, optimal for options than other ones, right? Like, how are we thinking about categorizing, um, like specific NFTs? Or is there, like, is, I guess I'll ask you, you know, from your perspective, is there a specific NFT you have in mind that'd be really ideal for options trading? I always thought raffles would be good. Yeah, the raffle market. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess the likeness of the, the, there's the likeness there, right? Where you have, it's the same creature, it's the same NFT, but they're all different rarities, giving them different value. Exactly. That would be interesting. It would be sort of like a, like a map for uh, the, the different wear, uh, wearable rarity tiers, like against one another. Um, but beyond that, I mean, you figured you'd want to start with things where there's like the demand, right? It'd have to be like high liquidity type type things. I mean, it, you wouldn't want to do it for something that um, people ha don't have a lot of incentive to, to buy or sell. Like, I mean, you'd be looking at, at like um, really like blue chip NFT projects, particularly. And I mean, Avogadro, I would consider one of those. But I mean, at the end of the day, not every asset in the Avogadro ecosystem would fit the bill for that. For sure, for sure. And actually, one of the things that I came across, which I'll also share some links, but Naima, I think it was you and I that we were talking about, about the fractionalization of, like, let's say, for example, crypto banks. So whether or not, like, the idea is to fractionalize these assets and then kind of can, you know, can you um, trade options on it? Or would it be, like, how would it work? I, I guess that's a kind of big question mark and whether that's, either being done at the moment or whether that's an opportunity. Um, I, I guess the, yeah, the one thing which this kind of brings me to, and I guess, Hefe, you, you mentioned it right at the start, Web, you also mentioned it, but, you know, it's what problems are these, like, I, I, I guess at the end of the day, the way I kind of see product development and like projects building, protocol building, whatever kind of new options there are. And I think one of you also mentioned, uh, Makeda, maybe it was yourself, you said that you're here to stay and whatever is built on top of Avagotchi, then obviously that kind of becomes like this kind of future of NFTs, which I thought was a, was a great way of kind of explaining it. So I guess more like the, the next question I, I actually had, which kind of links really well is, I guess as a gamer, as an investor in the Avagotchi system, or not, obviously we're talking about Avagotchi, but it can be kind of in a wider ecosystem. What are the, the different things that you guys are looking for to be able to do with your Avagotchis um, and your assets? Like, for example, one of the things I think you mentioned was insurance, you know, against these kind of NFTs. Um, so so I, I guess would love to hear your, your thoughts on what opportunities do you see to do with like you know to to actually utilize these these assets well you know as someone who uh was a hobby options trader for a little while uh, i think everybody's given their hand at it i'm not talking about day trading i'm talking about like uh you know buying like rut uh options and letting them expire kind of the the idea of selling an obligation instead of selling a right and so i mean that's what options are to me in the end at the end of the day is you know rights and obligations depending on what side of the the fence you're on and selling the right to i guess um make a claim on the nft if if a certain thing happened to the value of that nft would be kind of the idea of how i'm thinking about the insurance um, you would kind of, in a way, put up some collateral 
that would maybe insure your NFT against a loss in value, market value. Um, that could be one way. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the other way it could be a little bit more risky, but it could be more of a, a bet. So you're kind of betting that the value of your NFT is going to go up. And so that would be kind of like you purchasing a call on the NFT, uh, you know, with a certain amount of fur- that covers you for a certain amount of time. And so if the value of that NFT was to hit X amount over the period of that option, um, it would become more valuable uh, versus on the other side, betting that the value of an NFT would go down. You could, uh, you know, you could buy a put on the NFT and then that would bet, you know, if the value of that NFT went down, you're essentially shorting it. So you'd be able to make a claim on that. I guess that's the way I'm thinking about it, but it's not really quite, uh, not really quite there. I think, I think, you, you know, if there's anyone that's going to do it, it'll probably be you guys because you already understand like the value, uh, like how these NFTs are being valued on the market right now. Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting thing, right? Because there has to be a market to serve for the liquidity of the options to even take place, right? Like if you're buying an option to buy or sell something, call it a call, call it a put, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. I mean, you don't even have to use the same names. But if you're if you have that option to do that, there needs to march be a marketplace like just ready on the on the expiration of that option to serve that liquidity. Like you need like when when you're let's say you're you're buying an option to buy one one token, you know, 30 days from now. And when that thing comes to expiration, like you don't want to be on the hook for the purchase price of that thing. You just want to pay your option. But if if there's no person to to sell that thing that you're buying the option to buy right on the flip side of that then you're now on the you you have to be covered you have to be able to to put up the whole purchase price of the underlying asset and that's where it becomes really tricky for me it's like so so you basically need to have like uh you need to have deep liquidity for for the buy and the sell side of of the whole nft um, at the base level before you can even have an option marketplace like layered on top of that. So it it have to be something where there's a lot of demand for it. For sure, for sure. And I guess like how will that kind of come across? And you're absolutely right. Like maybe at the moment it could be an opportunity for some of the blue chip kind of um, collections. But I don't know. I kind of see it a little bit more as well as like, you know, something more unified. Like, I guess the values of NFTs go up and down. Does it have to be, like, I don't know, this part around fractionalization, I think, is super interesting. Um, but then, of course, like, as, as you said, there has to be enough liquidity. So I guess, like, with when it comes to Avegotri assets, like, are you, you know, I, I guess you guys around the table, you've been in this kind of for, for some time. You're obviously petting them on a daily basis, like, you know, daily basis, uh, taking care of them, getting all the root uh, that you, know, you can out of them. But do you guys see this as an investment, as like a, a longer term investment? Or is it just more so, okay, this is kind of like it's giving me, um, it's like a more short term investment? Like, how, how do you guys view your assets in a game? Do you see those as like long term investment, short term? Or, or how do you see those? Compared to other assets, I would say we see, you know, I can't speak for everybody, but I see myself as a, a long-term investor with Avagachis, given the, the nature of what they are and the way the protocol is built is it allows for people to build on top of it vertically. So I could imagine many verticals being built on top of Avagachi. And ultimately, that's what's going to give the asset staying power and relevance over time. And we're not seeing that with other projects. Well, I mean, maybe we are with some other projects uh, just now, but we've been building for, you know, two years. And so we have like other verticals that have been built on top of Avagachi, like the Gachiverse, uh, fake Gachis. We have the Forge, which was the first DAO built initiative. And so we have these other things coming on chain that are sophisticating the protocol and adding value to the protocol, also adding staying power. So I think that's, and you know, just you were talking about uh, the liquidity there and the likeness of these NFTs. I could see there being uh, kind of like an ETF for Avagachis. I mean, you could take a group of Avagachis, like a like a bundle or a basket, 
And the price movement on those Avogachis is what you could buy options on. Um, and so, you know, and that would be one way to solve maybe the liquidity issue because now you wouldn't be tracking one asset. You'd be tracking a group of assets like an ETF. So maybe that could be one way to address that. I could see there being many different bundles or pools being made, you know, like maybe you have a double myth eye Avogadji pool, which is some of which are some of the more statistically rare Avogadji's. There's only 300 in the whole game. And so having that as a pool to track and bet options against would be very gamified and interesting, uh, in my opinion. But just having these little subgroups within Avogadji would be would be really interesting to, to track that. But in short, yes, uh, it's definitely a long term investment for me. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to echo that as well. It's like I look at it as a like a like a lifetime entertainment uh, asset. Like this is the ecosystem that, you know, I was interested in. And, and so far, I've spent a ton of time investing in and, and like it's almost it's almost like a big part of me now. And I just I, you know, I don't really see it really going away like throughout my entire lifetime. Like I can just see layers and layers and layers over decades just being iterated on and being able to compose over to other projects. And, and I mean, I'm sure that's a super long time frame, but I mean, it's, it, it's the, the, the nature of the tech is that it's designed that way, right? It's, it's a, uh, it's a database that's public that all this stuff is stored on. So anybody, you know, as the, as the value, the, the network of value that's associated with that, this assets keeps compounding through time. I mean, there's going to be more incentive for other builders to come in and keep putting on those different vertical layers of, of scale and applications that, that improve the, the value proposition behind it and, and, you know, op- opening up the door for different uh, tiers of entry into the ecosystem, like as demand comes, you know. Absolutely. Um, for sure, for sure. Anybody wants to add a little bit more um, to this one or should I jump on to my, my next question for you guys? Uh, for, for me, they're like little stable of horses, you know, each one's got their own personality. It's like a, a set of cars. Like it, just one is fantastic, but you do kind of get a little bit, um, I don't want to say addicted to them, right? But each one's got their own personality. There is no such thing as like a bad gachi. They're each one's it's got its own its own experience. I love that. I love that. I guess you you end up having such a description of them. Like I don't know when when I was kind of looking into into the the various different types of assets specifically to like figure out like what value they have and and all of that. I just felt like all of the even even just on Twitter, right? Like everyone has like they treat their avagachi as like, like kind of. I don't know whether it's like kind of sort of like an identity, but it's a little bit like, yeah, this is like my piece of work. I've done this, like with the wearables, everything. It's like, I've, I've built this and I take care of it, which is which is really great. Yeah, at least for me. Yeah, it's like my friend, right? It's not my my yeah. digital mirror. It's not like my identity. It's like my responsibility. This is my, my little digital buddy here. Exactly, exactly. Awesome. Um, so I guess opportunities within this kind of market, and I know that um, Maxi Crouton, right at the start, we did, uh, wait, are you still on the call? Actually, no, you're just not on nope. the call anymore. Gone. Gone. Okay, but we did speak briefly at the beginning of the call. Uh, Bitcoin was at 22,950, and now it's, it's definitely surpassed a really kind of strong support and it's a 23 300 which is insane but we spoke about um whether you know are we already like starting in a bull a bull market but obviously there is going to be some potential time again there is obviously going to be like i will retract those words people think that there is going to be some time before we see kind of all time highs um, but I'm kind of very curious to know from, from you guys, like I, I see a lot of NFT trading. Um, I'm not sure whether I've seen it in Avigotti as such, but I see, you know, people using Pawn for different, like, you know, NFT trading um, opportunities. I guess I'm kind of thinking within Avigotti, like, is that like a thing? Like, you know, a lot of NFT trading, uh, but also what are what are some of the strategies that you guys are seeing or doing um, with NFTs at the moment? Uh, 
Um, well, right now, due to the illiquidity of NFTs, I mean, a really popular way to trade them is just capturing spread. I mean, there's so much spread like in between, um, let's say like a floor NFT and like the next one up or the next one up after that. And, and I think that really like one thing that I, I'd like to see you guys sort of take, take, a take a, a shot at is adding like uh, a deeper liquidity um like bid and ask system for for nfts because i think that that's really something that's that's going to help it scale up to the next level like if you have a a market ready to to liquidate whatever nft that you want to to sell like if you, if you if there's just a automated market maker that you can show up to and be like i want to sell this token id whatever it is and then there's people like, oh, this is the current bid price for for this NFT. Then, I mean, it, it exists a bit on on OpenSea with um, less complex uh, NFTs, but I could see. I mean, I could see that being like a super. Can we take? Product. Can we take it a step further and integrate it to the Gachiverse map and give us a submission bid system for parcels based on location? So that way I can just knock on your door and say, hey, I got a bid for you on this particular parcel. That's a that's a very product specific solution that I would benefit from. <laughs> yeah, they're not they're not your personal builders, Mike Kalium. Man, I, <laughs> I, I think I represent a large swatch of the interested community of digital real estate speculators and our location to bid system is non-existent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, not even just the gachi verse. That's probably like a uh, cross ecosystem uh, like value add that you could really target. I love it. Um, and yes, like I guess at this point, uh, people in the pawn team definitely feel like whether I am some way associated to Amitachi, as all of the features that we do request are heavily related to 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 things that obviously the community does provide us feedback on. But this is how. Like, this is kind of why we do these kind of AMAs as well, because we actually do want to build for a specific project, because we know that if it's useful to you, it will be useful to, to more people and more projects and more communities. Um, so definitely interesting. <laughs> but um, all right, so su super interesting what you just said around um, adding that obviously deeper liquidity. I definitely think that there is a market for that. And one of the things that we do keep talking about is especially for like large lenders like whenever they come and they're like okay i'm happy to lend like you know lots and lots and even to like the adagachi system we've got like ecosystem we've got some people that would be happy to but they definitely want a way to liquidate those assets um quickly like if if um if they end up kind of getting hold of them um have you guys seen any projects that do this really well whether it's in you know, other ecosystems, other other blockchains. Um, and any ideas that anybody wants to share around this? I have some of my personal ideas, which I'm obviously happy to share at some point, but keen to know whether you guys see any other projects as inspiration for this. I was hoping you guys would be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically this idea, and I know that someone else in the Solana ecosystem is doing this, but I'm actually... I actually really like the gamification angle, but it's basically like if imagine Pawn was to, I'm not saying that we are actually building this. This is an idea which I actually don't even think I've spoken to the team about yet, but imagine um, anybody that is like Pawn has its own kind of NFT collection. We, people kind of buy it in the secondary market or they mint it, but each NFT would give you specific amount of points um, based on those kind of amounts of points, you would kind of get raffle tickets or, or something of that sort. So essentially, whenever there is kind of an asset that is um, that has been um, like you know the, the loan expired and the borrower didn't pay, so the lender ends up with the asset, so they can say, okay, put it up in this marketplace, and then it's kind of like a raffle system. So it kind of becomes a bit more of a game, but you could put depending on how many tickets you have, depending on how invested you are into this kind of porn NFT collection, then you would essentially be able to min, uh, sort of get, you know, pay for those raffle tickets. And if it is, then it's a specific price, which you get the NFT at a very, very cheap price, because that's 
maybe the minimum that the lender paid plus a little bit more or something like that. Um, but I'm kind of thinking something like that, which makes it a little bit more gamified, which kind of ties in with us partnering up with, um, you know, gaming collections, etc. But yeah, not sure, like obviously how long would that take to build or anything, but we're definitely looking for solutions on how to, how to liquidate those assets quicker so that people can lend more and be, be much kind of confident about their investments, their, their loans to, um, to, to others on phone. Yeah, that's an interesting take. I could see like a, 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 like a marketplace existing for people coming in and actually um, appraising like uh, the NFT positions that people are trying to get loans for, like having verified uh, appraisers for such things, like what, what could be like a market liquidation type price for, you know, X NFT. Um, I, I could see that being helpful to your users because I'm sure that like the people that are lending aren't necessarily the same kind of user that's borrowing at the end of the day. For sure. And at the beginning, I did think that it would be the same person, like, you know, depending on when you have or, or whatever, but you're absolutely right. I think you're the borrower profile that we have is very, very different to the lender profile. Um, and very few times we see when, someone's doing both things, borrowing and lending, but usually you either are on one side or, or the other. Great, awesome. Um, I guess the, the I have a couple of last questions, more short. Um, by the way, I've loved all the ideas that have come out of this and all of these conversations. To be honest, if I could, I would actually put everyone together in a room let everyone talk for hours and hours, and then that would essentially build our entire roadmap. And I'm sure everything will be super helpful for you guys. So I definitely look forward to doing more of these and listening to feedback from the community, which is obviously what drives us and what drives our roadmap and, and everything that we do. I guess that the next thing is, what are you guys most looking forward to in the Abaco Chief? So I guess nothing to do with, well, maybe, to do with DeFi or not, but just really keen to to know, you know, what is it that you you guys are both looking forward to? User generated content. You can talk after that, Hefe. That was all I wanted to say. Yeah, absolutely. I want to see more user generated content. I think fake gotchis has been a big deal. Um, probably see the forge uh, that was built on uh, the protocol by the DAO. I think we'll see that uh, provide more opportunities for wearable submissions, and maybe we'll get some pawn down wearables one day in Avagachi for Avagachis to wear. And uh, just having that sort of like partnerships through wearables is going to be interesting to see that play out, uh, especially now that we've solved the problem of introducing new designs without inflating the wearable supply. So. That's going to be that's going to be exciting. Uh, another thing that we've discussed privately, which uh, I'm going to get a thread out here on that today in the Discord DAO forums, is possibly some sort of a partnership between Avagachi DAO and Pawn. You know, you guys have a background in building um, already financial instruments for the Avagachi itself, but now I think maybe it would be a perfect partnership to maybe build some sort of Av Avagachi valuation model that can uh, accurately, um, you know, accurately kind of depict one value, you know, a value of Avagachi to another, because that's really difficult to do. But I think that would also be a prerequisite to everything else we've talked about today with uh, options and whatnot. I think you'd have to know how to pound for pound compare pair one Avagachi to another before, uh, you know, building other tools on top of it. So that's something I'm looking forward to personally. Nice. And I guess adding to that, one of the things that Webb, you mentioned was, you know, deeper liquidity is needed. And actually so many people come to us and say, you know, okay, I see that there's like this, you know, snowball effect kind of starting to form with Avagachi assets on phone. 
but what is the actual value of that? So obviously we have our own kind of internal quick calculations, which we're like, okay, you know, what kind of avagotchi is it? How, like, you know, what are the wearables worth, etc. But I think there's obviously so much more to that. Like, um, you know, I, I don't know, just like so much more to that. So that's kind of why we, we I spoke to, to Hefen. We're kind of hoping that we can do some kind of partnership there for this valuation model, just so that we can bring in more liquidity from other, like external parties who are not necessarily in the Avigachi system at the moment. So I guess that plus a liquidation system, oh my God, I think would be on fire for sure. Well, you'd be a one of a kind product in the whole space at that point. I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> nobody else, nobody else is is even trying to tackle something so complex. Let alone like on such a niche level. I mean, you'd have to do it catered for for each individual project, not just like Avogachi. Like each one would be different. I mean, it, if if you were to go about it, I think it'd almost be worth it for you to make a system for for people to come in and, and make their own valuation models as exactly. opposed to just making an Avogachi one, and and then you have to turn around and make another one if you want to cater to another community down the road. Exactly, absolutely. And I think that is the goal. Like the goal is, you know, at the end of the day, we do believe in this kind of, you know, the strength of community and people do want to build these things on, on top of Pawn. Um, so I guess it's more like, okay, let's figure out, I guess for me, like I've always had a photo around um, startups and just how to kind of start a business, everything. And it's like, at the start, like do things that don't scale and then we'll figure out how to scale later. But I definitely think that if, if it works for you guys, then definitely we will figure out a model that works for other communities as well, which we're actually um, speaking to um, at the moment. So I guess I'm a little bit conscious of time because we've got a couple of minutes to go. Um, and I know that Petra did want to do a, a raffle. I guess my last question for everybody, which can be like a really quick rapid fire round or something like that. Um, you can see my energy because I'm actually like, or you can listen to it because I'm actually taking my finger. But I'm think I want to ask you guys, what's the next Avogachi? <laughs> so obviously, this is not financial advice for anything. For anybody listening to this later, please do not take this in any other way. But I'm just trying to get some alpha for our readers. Like, you know, you guys are gamers. You guys are in this world like day in day out. What what is the next Avogachi? Let's see. That's tough. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll give like the cliche answer and be like, there's no need for a next Avogachi yet because Avogachi is not over. Like, we're not late. We're very, very <laughs> early and there's still so much to occur. The The more time I spend in the space and on this project, the the more I realize how much there is yet to accomplish. And so the, for me, there's no uh, tomorrow horizon that's that uh captivating yet because there's still a lot to do here i love the loyalty for sure <laughs> yeah i mean uh, i sort of echo that and i i guess i would say from my perspective my personal question is what's the next great thing that's going to get built on top of avogachi i mean really the avogachi assets and avogachi protocol itself is just really to facilitate experiences that'll be built on top of it and so I'm looking forward to seeing Avogachis making their way into other metaverses. Like we've already, uh, we're building an experience in Sandbox, a DAO built Avogachi experience there. We are, we're going to be in Genzo Kishi, which is a huge uh, MMORPG uh, that was initially a Web 2 RPG, now going Web 3, and has integrated Avogachis into their game. Um, I could see other games adopting adopting the Avagachi character. You know, uh, Avagachi is a brand, probably making it into other metaverses. Uh, really, just uh, having this simple character uh, allows for so many different creative things to be implemented on top. So, you know, I think if you had asked me what's the next board ape, I would have said it's not going to be anything like a board ape. It's going to be an Avagachi. But I can't look so far ahead as to say what the next Avogachi is going to be yet, just because, uh, like McCallum, I think we're, you know, I always compare it to a baseball game. And, uh, you know, the tickets were just given out and people haven't even taken their seats yet. So uh, once we, you know, once we kick off the main features of what Avogachi uh, has, you know, from Pixelcraft's perspective versus 
other things coming on and building the protocol. Uh, I'm hoping to see it blow up. I think this is going to be, we're calling it the year of the gachi. So. I love that. I love that. And I actually quite like the, you know, at the end of the day, what we started off the conversation with, which is, you know, what is going to be built on top of the Abigoshi ecosystem is kind of like a potential next big thing. So I, I definitely love that. You know, what we said at the beginning is kind of coming full circle to the end. I guess, does anybody want to add anything else to, to that kind of final question or any final remarks? Yeah, so I have one, just a good idea that I want to see someone else build because it's always a good idea when you inject GBM is is with the Pondao platform, you guys are ish, you know giving us like a peer-to-peer -peer platform for issuing these one-to-one -one match um, offers, right? I only need one other counterparty essentially to close something mm -hmm. out. Um, interacting with GBM to make uh, the, the general public compete for the opportunity to be the counterparty to these deals employing the bid to earn mechanism yeah. there's something there i haven't figured it out yet in full fleshing but there's something there if you make no, me fight web idea. yeah if you make me fight web for the opportunity to issue liquidity against the avagachi nft um there's something to that and gbm's a great partner yeah so one problem that i was having when i was using your guys's platform is pricing my loan right like how do i know where the appetite for liquidity is like, uh, let's say I have a basket of assets and I've, and I've bundled them and I, and I want to get a loan for them. Um, there's no, there's no way for the marketplace to set the price for my loan. But if you had a bid system where people could come in and be like, okay, this is how much I'm willing to loan for, let's say I want, like, uh, let's say me as the, um, borrower, I come in and I set my, my, uh, like my, uh, term, my loan term. And then the perspective lenders can be like okay well this is the perspective this is the commensurate amount of risk i'm willing to take for your basket of goods like this is my offer as opposed to the person trying to get the loan coming in and do that because it's it, it ends up with like a mismatch right it's a low liquidity marketplace and and you really need to you really need to meet make tools for your for the two sides of the party to 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 be able to come together for an arrangement right now it just exists for like i set my offer and maybe there's no appetite at that price or, or whatever it is yeah you're absolutely right and actually one of the things which we're building next um again can't specify the specific timeline but i'm hoping like you know it will be in this kind of first half of this year and i'm giving a very very extensive timeline is this kind of feature which we don't i'm not sure whether we have an official name yet but it's kind of like a explore feature like an open sea for lending which right now as as we've said web like the the borrower makes the first move right like you say okay this is how much i'm going to price it this is my asset lender you know here you go lenders what you know, what are the offers so we're actually going to reverse that and have both uh, both options like both ways what that means is say for example we have a page where all of the Abigachi assets are listed. You can either filter through them or, or or whatever. And then lenders can actually come in and say, actually, I want to put a bid on this kind of specific Gachi. So you would not know, but when you would come onto Pawn, you would say already like, oh my God, yes, I've already got an offer. Um, um, oh, I think Steve just said, um, yeah, Pawn name pending, but it's Pawn C. So like we all didn't see the Pawn C, perfect. Um, but this way, the, the the lender would put in the offers first, and then the borrowers would come in and say, hey, oh my God, there's like five offers online, similar to OpenSea at the moment. And then it would be like, okay, great, I'm going to take an offer. And then that kind of just becomes much quicker as well for whenever someone does need liquidity, they immediately go on the platform. And we're hoping that there's already like a collection offer Um so, for example, someone's saying, okay, if it meets this, this, this criteria, then I'm willing to put an offer of this much on my gotcha. So um, that's something that we are working on and we are building. So I guess it would be great to just, once we have a little bit more of a, you know, product specification on it, I'd love to get you guys around and just kind of talk about it a little bit more and, and get your feedback on, on that feature. Yeah, that sounds interesting. I mean, anything really to help the the two sides of the arrangement come together on terms. Um, it seems like maybe 
the way that you're describing it is sort of like a open C type index where it has every available um, asset from each collection, like available for, for, I guess, like bidding for lending. I can see how that could come across as like just maybe like a little bit clunky, maybe like a little like market product misfit because of, I mean, like there's got to be, there's got to be a side to, to that trade. Like who's going to want to go around and put the, put lending bids on, on a whole uh, ecosystem as opposed to, because then that ties up their liquidity, right? It, it goes there. You put an offer in on something and then your liquidity is just sitting there and you end mm -hmm. up like having to revoke it or whatever. And in order to be able to put in that other offer, and I could I could just see that that being a little bit clunky from a user experience as opposed to like you have the you have the borrower, they they want to come in and borrow. That's that's like that's like your market right there. And then you create the tool to let the lender um price that that borrow, like, okay, so this is this is what the the current lending um like uh sorry the the current uh lending pool of whoever's i guess engaged at this point is like willing to price that 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 loan at like this is this is the the amount of funds and and the rate at which you're going to be able to get received for that as opposed to um the lend the sorry the borrower setting the price of the loan like i mean obviously the borrower wouldn't want to they probably need to set like a reserve or something they're not going to want to um, you know, they're not going to want, maybe they they don't want to like borrow like nothing, but, uh, but does that understand from, does that make sense to a certain extent what I'm talking about? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that definitely is the, I guess you're, you're totally right because obviously if someone says, okay, I'm going to make a collection offer and I'm going to put a ton of liquidity, you're going to have your funds blocked. So it's kind of like, okay, one feature at a time, but I totally get what you're coming from around, okay, but then the liquidity is stuck and it's not making you any kind of passive income in other kind of specs or, or anything like that. So I'm, I'm totally with you and definitely something that I will be um, be reaching out to you guys for for feedback for sure. Yeah, I mean, a collection, a collection offer is a little bit different than the individual assets too. So, I mean, like, I could see that be a little bit more enticing. It's just like from the individual uh, asset perspective, I could just, I, mean, I, I see how it would just be quite clunky from like a getting actual yield perspective. Like you just have a bunch of, a bunch of funds like sitting there waiting for, for these offers that never get closed because, you know, a lot of these holders aren't necessarily like onboarded into your ecosystem. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Sorry, was just someone to, going to say something? Yeah, yeah. I, just to talk a little bit like far future alpha, uh, we were already thought about that and we are we, we still do. So beside like creating offer to one specific asset and collection offers, uh, we actually already have uh, a possibility, not, not uh, developed on the platform, but it's possible on the contract level to create an offer on a set of IDs. So for example, if... Uh, there is some uh, crypto punk. I can create a collection offer for any punk. But let's say I value zombie punks much more, right? So I can create offer only for zombie punks if I identify their IDs. That's one thing. And second thing uh, with uh, with the standing assets, with the standing uh, like credit assets. Uh, what I'm thinking, and I think it's possible. I did a small research, and I think it's possible. We can create some kind of like a gnosis safe module which will, on the acceptance of the offer, actually borrow the funds from Aave, from Compound, from whatever whatever um, whatever protocol you choose, and actually use them uh, to fund the loan at that time. So your fund will 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 basically like compound in that in that protocols and will be like borrowed or or withdrawn on the on the offer accept uh, on the offer acceptance and uh, repaid or deposited again on the on the loan repayment it's not it's not like uh, we are not building it now but it, it's something i already did some research and i think it's possible and i'll be uh, i'll be trying to push that in the, in the near future or in a little bit longer future that's awesome man 
Perfect. Amazing. Well, I know that we are quite a bit kind of delayed on, on this call, but guys, I've, I've really enjoyed this conversation. And to be honest, I'm sure that there's like, you know, a ton more of ideas that we could maybe like speak about and, and everything, but um, just giving an opportunity for anyone for some final thoughts. Um, if not, then Petra, I'm not sure if you already initiated the raffle that was going to happen. Um, are you going to do it after the call? I can start it now. And by the way, thanks for the conversation. It was really, really interesting. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully we will keep on uh, talking together uh, about all the things uh, you've mentioned. It was really, really good. And by the way, don't forget to like share all the like protocols you've mentioned. Uh, so also for other people who are interested. Um, and by the way, the raffle is about uh, our merchandise. It's a backpack and a tote bag. So in case somebody's interested, um, I'm starting in, in the pawn general channel. Let's give it a try. All right. I think it's started. Amazing. Yeah. It, it takes one minute. So yeah, head to the pawn general channel. And really, thanks. Thanks for joining us. All right, great. Perfect. Well, thank you, everyone, for all your thoughts, everything. I really definitely want to keep the conversation going. Um, and yeah, let's let's just keep chatting and we'll keep you guys posted with with the latest updates with Pon. Thanks so much for inviting me. It was it was a treat. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all.